Hi everybody, live from Hollywood Productions Amsterdam. Welcome to another Corona Diaries live chat. Today's guest is a special one. He is waiting in Los Angeles. Let's connect to Robert Lazardo. Robert, are you there? Amsterdam calling LA. Here is Robert. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. How are you? Fine, nice to see you. Thank you. And Cesar is here today. Hi, Robert. Cesar, hey. How are you? I'm good, brother. I woke up again. So you woke up again. And uh, I'm grateful. Yeah. Grateful. <laughs> Always. Yeah. My so, friend, he has a saying. I have a friend. He has a saying. I ask him how he's doing. He says to me, Robert, I woke up today. All my limbs are attached. I'm not on fire and no one's <laughs> shooting at me. So it's a good cool, day. Cool. So, Robert, first of all, uh, you always get a lot of attention. You know why? Because of your tattoos. Because this is really crazy. Everybody asked me already about your tattoos because they said, Oh, look at him. He has a lot of tattoos, all his body, cover it with neck, chest, arm, all over, you know. Tell us about this story of your tattoos, actually, because this is really always getting an attention in all your movies, actually. Well, it's, um, it's quite a tribute to me uh, that people still consider it something uh, of a topic to discuss. Uh, I started when I was 17 years old. Uh, I grew up in New York, in Brooklyn, when tattooing was illegal. And I got my first tattoo when I was 17 years old. Wow. Uh, I sent you a picture uh, on the, Inst uh, the uh, WhatsApp to show what my chest looked like when I was 21 years old. So since uh, then, I spent the last uh, three decades uh, putting tattoos on top of tattoos. And so it's many stories about my journey through uh, my adolescence life, uh, my journey in the Navy. I traveled overseas. Uh, I traveled across the South Pacific. Uh, I visited places like Fiji, yeah. Australia, uh, many, many places uh, that I cannot even remember. But I know that uh, every, almost every port that had a tattoo shop there, I made sure that uh, I was in it and getting tattooed. So that started... I wouldn't say that started the journey, but that definitely was the continuation of uh, the tattoo experience from New York to the Navy. Uh, I think I was discharged out of the Navy in 1985. And then I just continued to uh, uh, visit various tattoo artists around the United States and just continue to put the pieces of my puzzle together. Yeah, because you were all over the press, magazines, cover of the lot of magazines, and then also I can show also one of them actually in front of me. Here is Robert Lasardo. And then we see you with some writing actually, with some books. Yes. Life yes. Sentence, a true story about love. So that was, I think, interesting. So, because I want to show also about a nice footage actually I think this is an interesting program. You're just opening your eyes now. Life sentence. Luck in the afternoon. Oh, and the yeah. is already going now. Here's Robert Lucerdo. <laughs> wow. This was in Switzerland. Interesting. You didn't change. You are the same. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. tell us about these books, because this was, I think, one of the books you wrote. Yes. This is, But you have, I yes, think, this is more books. <clears throat> yeah, this is, uh, I wrote this in, uh, I think this came out 2014, about, uh, yeah, about six, uh, six years ago. Um, okay. The book is called Life Sentence, A True Story About Love, 
lunacy and fame. Because uh, in my experience, they all kind of mingled a bit. They all kind of worked together in a very odd way. Um, I wrote the book when I was living in Canada. I lived in Montreal for several years. And uh, I had some free time. And I thought, well, for years, people have been asking me questions about the tattoos. You know, what's yep. their significance? Yep. Why did I get them? Why so many? Uh, how has it affected my experience with my career negatively and positively? Does it interfere with my ability to be cast in certain roles? Does it help me to get uh, hired in Hollywood because of the extremeness of the look? So I thought, you know what? I'm finally going to put pen to paper and answer these questions in a sort of allegory in a myriad of stories that chronicle my journey from a teenager up until now or up until, you know, a significant end that made sense to me. Interesting. Actually, in front of me, yeah. because when I'm talking to you, I see some of the titles you are in. Actually, I see In Hell with Jean-Claude Van Damme, Hard to Kill with Steven Seagal, Steven, Water World yeah. with Kevin Costner, Against Steven Seagal, Out for Justice, okay. CSI yes. Miami, yes. Yes. even other movies like Latin Dragon and many yeah. more. You know? So that was all interesting yeah. titles. But actually, well, can I tell you something? Can I share something with you? I have a Steven Seagal story. Can oh, I share one? this with you? About the Hard to Kill or Out for Both, both of these films. Yeah. So I met Steven Seagal at a casting call. Warner Brothers was doing casting for Hard to Kill. So okay. I went in for the audition. I read for the director and I read for Steven Seagal. And Steven made some comments to me that were very um, complimentary. He was very, uh, he appreciated my efforts at the audition. And so I, uh, I got a call back and I got hired. And so then we went on to make this film Hard to Kill. While we were on set, uh, Steven started talking to me. He was curious about the tattoos and we became friendly. And uh, he started telling you about a movie concept or a screenplay, something he was developing about a bunch of guys in Brooklyn, uh, gangster types who were involved in a shooting. And he went on to tell me more particulars about the story. And he said, um, there's a role in there for you, Robert. And a year later, I got a phone call from my manager at the time saying that Steven Seagal wants to meet with you. So I was kind of shocked because, you know, you hear a lot of things in Hollywood from famous people, celebrities, and they make promises that unfortunately they don't always keep. keep. But in Steven's case, uh, he was a man of his word and honorable. And uh, I met with him and his director for Alfred Justice. And I shook the director's hand. We did a brief improv, Stephen and I, together to demonstrate to the director that I could walk and talk at the same time and be effective in the role. Uh, long story short, I got hired. Oh, wow. Thanks to Stephen. So yeah, he's because, a great guy. Yeah, because yeah. I think both movies did, did pretty well in that time. So I think yeah. they were really good two movies of yours. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. both movies are really cool. I mean, Out for Justice, I think in uh, 91 in 1991 mm -hmm. and then hard to kill was one year before in 1990 yeah. so which were all interesting films of steven seagal actually after above the law and then of course you have more big big titles which is cesar is holding now the death race the first time i saw you playing was in this movie that race of course ex especially one of the best movies of jason statham in that period So I think that was really interesting to work in that project because yeah, hey, the movie. I have something to say to you. The I have movie to say to you. I have something to say to you, and Caesar, about yes. this film. Are you yes. ready? I'm You're ready. Both ready. <laughs> We are ready. You can't kill me. You can't kill me. Yeah, you proved that. <laughs> yeah, you proved <laughs> that. <laughs> and let's go about you in this movie about the death race. What is going on? And let's hear some footage and the movie, your scenes. And my team, he's killed four men off the track. Yeah, we know of. Another seven on it. Hector Grimm, the Grim Reaper, the man's a master. Clinical psychopath believes that Hennessy is an avatar of the Hindu goddess of death, Kali, and that he is her messenger. Three time consecutive life wow. sentences. He's killed six men off the track, another
You are like a psychopath, I think. They are talking about you with Jason. He's already getting info in the jail, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, hey, someone someone has to do it, yeah? Yeah, I think those those times are the really cool times in the death race. Of course, we love you there. And let's see again some footage more from the death race. Oh. <laughs> Fucking rip, baby. Can't kill me. Army. You can fucking shoot me, but you just can't, motherfucker. Kill me! Oh. What happened? Oh. <laughs> it was really cool. I love it. I love the scenes. I love you in the jail. How you were playing with Jason, and that was that movie was awesome. And of course, later there were some sequels come. The second one, the third one, Inferno. You know, but the first one was. Amazing, awesome! I like it very much. Yeah, you know, I wish I wish I would have taken the opportunity to go into the theaters and see the film on the big screen. I did watch it when it came out, but I, uh, I watched it when it was available on the. Uh, back in those days, you could still buy DVDs and watch films in a traditional format. So I watched it on DVD because sometimes, you know, when you make a film, you don't always know, uh, in terms of the editorial, how it's going to come out. So I was a little bit nervous, uh, but. Uh, in retrospect, I realized that I really kind of missed out on a great movie experience. I would have loved to have seen it on the big screen because it was quite spectacular you know, yeah. on many levels. Good and, and very good actors also. Tyrese was there, of course. Yeah. Also, and mean, Jason, Jason Statham is a, is a gentleman. I, I didn't speak much with him, but I introduced myself. He shook my hand. He had a just a, a very uh, humble, kind of charismatic way about him. And he smiled at me. And it was just, it was, you know, you know when someone is uh, approachable, and he was. So it was a pleasure to work with Jason. Yeah. Now, was it difficult to do the scenes, you know, the, the, the race scenes? No, actually, it was quite fun. You know, there was, yeah. there was a sequence where the car flips over, you know, obviously, in this, in, 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 prior to the scene that you showed. The, the car, I lose, con Grim loses control of his, his 300 Chrysler, and the car rolls, flips several times. So what they did was, they built the frame of the car and placed it on a, on a, a gyroscope type platform and oh, yeah. linked cameras to the, to the passenger and driver's side and strapped me in. So it was indicative of like being at a, an amusement park and going on one of those <laughs> rides when you turn upside down. Yeah, so they proceeded to turn you. the car upside down. And I said, wow, I'm getting paid for this. <laughs> Good yeah. time. Good stuff. Yeah, I think it was really, really, really good one, you know. So that's why you played very well. Your character was nice. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah. Again, we are showing, you know, from the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was really, really nice, actually. And here is CSI Miami. Also, I think you played a good character. It was an interesting yeah. character. Actually, yeah, the character's name was things? Memo Fierro. Yeah, character's name is Memo Fierro. He's uh, a member of a, a, a crime syndicate called the Ma Malanoche. And uh, this is the scene with him and Horatio Cain where he's basically pressing him to give up names to inform on the cartel. Yeah, because I saw you like in five episodes on the CSI Miami, which was also yeah. a really, really good one. So Yeah, what's interesting about that, uh, Veryl and, and Cesar, is that I have a history with David Caruso. I did my first film with him, a film called China Girl, directed by Abel Ferrara. Oh, yeah. And then I went on to do the series NYPD Blue, where David Caruso, the first season, starred as the lead, uh, lead in that, as the police officer. And I have an episode with him where he inter interrogates me. So, um, and then we did a film together called King of New York, starring Christopher Walken, Wesley Snipes, Lawrence Fishburne, uh, David Caruso and many others who've gone on to become quite famous. Actors. Great names, yeah, yeah, indeed. All great names, all. So that was also a very, very nice one, actually, CSI Miami, you know? Yeah. They, you know, it's, it's great to work with David because he's such a talented actor. And um, when you work with David, he's very meticulous about the scene and the dialogue. And so you, you have an opportunity to work with David on a high profile TV show. Also, you get an acting class from him because he's 
he is relentless about perfection in terms of what the scene suggests, even if it means going against what the writer's original concept is. And he gets has gotten into some arguments, unfortunately, with people who did not agree with him. But I always found his method to be refreshing yeah. because he challenges the art form and raises it to another level. So you get a, an opportunity to work with him, get paid, and you get a free acting class. So you can't <laughs> beat it. Yeah, and of course, I get a lot of messages. We started to get lots of messages, actually. Of course, uh, a yeah. lot of people knows you and remembers you. Remember you from Escobar, Gallardo right. character yeah. on the FX hit series, Nip Tuck. So that was, yes. also, I think, interesting story. Let's see. I think this footage is from there. And let's see. Myself, okay. I'm Escobar Gallardo, Celia's boyfriend. Sure you're not hungry, guys? <laughs> My girlfriend, she loves the hot shit restaurants in town, but I prefer it here. Nothing beats a fruity tootie. He's your personal taster. With power comes envy. With envy comes assassination. Maybe if you laid off the mm. cocaine, you wouldn't be so paranoid. <laughs> oh, Robert. <laughs> Wait up, bro. Old school. Guys, don't you miss the 80s, man? That tit you're holding is worth a quarter of a million dollars. What do you want? What's mine? Pepe, fetch the tits. One. <laughs> People are always going to hate themselves. Two. We do our jobs with the utmost precision. Pretty well, no scars, huh? very well, actually. No sense. So uh, tell us about your experience in the set with these guys. I think this was also a um, great series. And it was amazing in that period also. A lot of ratings. People oh. love the show. So Yeah. A big <laughs> tribute to Ryan Murphy yeah. uh, for hiring me, because he's the one that made the decision, ultimately, to hire me. Um, and this is prior to... Um, many of the successful shows that he's championed over the years. So I'm just grateful that I was in company like that and that he appreciated my ability to uh, uh, manifest that character uh, adequately. I didn't realize that there'd be so much impact in retrospect uh, over the several episodes that I did. I had a great experience. I auditioned like any other audition, uh, not knowing what was to come until the airing of the show on FX. And I was invited to the premiere of this I went into, uh, I forget where they held the premiere, a uh, big auditorium type situation. So I walked in, no one was really talking to me. I was by myself. And uh, I sat there and curtain lifted. We watched the show on the big screen, first episode, season one, the pilot. And uh, when the curtain came down and lights went on and I left my seat, all of a sudden people started flocking to me. Old managers, old agents, people I didn't even know just complimented me saying what a great job I did. So I was a bit beside myself because I didn't expect that type of response, nor did I realize uh, what I was doing. Because I had done, I had participated in shows where there were similar, uh, similar characteristics, let's say, with around this type of character dynamic. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's just a question of the material or being in the right place at the right time, doing what you've done many times, but doing it on a platform that one of the crucial elements is a genius that Ryan Murphy conveyed in this dynamic show. Yeah. Uh, so from him to every producer, Greer Shepard, Michael Robbins, the, the lead actors, everyone, I had a wonderful time and a camaraderie that I have yet to experience on that level, with the exception of CSI Miami. Yeah, yeah, that was really awesome. But of course, I mean, when I look at your uh, films, titles, they are amazing because you were in King of New York with Wesley Snipes and Christopher Walken. That was a really big movie. I mean, one of the biggest movies in that period, you know, like King well, of New York. Everybody knows it. That it. It came out the same weekend that Goodfellas was released. Mark exactly. Spazzese's Goodfellas was released that same weekend. Yeah, so it was exactly. up against them. Then, Tough competition, yeah. Also, uh, the X Files. Actually, we we had it here. X Files. Also, it was really yeah. also a nice project. X Files, and also I see you even though with Jean Claude Van Damme in Hell, the movie. Yeah, 
also. Yeah. Now I just show it the DVD cover. What's up, JC? What's up, man? <laughs> Jean Claude is a really cool guy. And then can even I tell though, you, even though, can I tell you, can I tell you a quick Jean Claude Van Damme story, real fast? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So we're in Bulgaria, yeah, and we're getting ready to make this film. And I've never met Jean Claude Van Damme before. I met Ringo Lam, who directed this film. Great director. And anyway, so I was sitting in the restaurant within the hotel in Bulgaria, and Jean Claude Van Damme came up to me. He said, "Hello." He said. I noticed something about you, Robert. Can I say? I, I said, sure. He said, I think you're a fair man. You are a fair man. But not everybody that you meet in your life is this way. And you don't understand. And sometimes uh, you feel ill at ease and ill placed in the world. And I thought, wow, this guy's got uh, quite an insight. And, and from that point on, uh, him and I, uh, we hit it off quite well. Because he seemed to be one of those people, at least with me, where there was no pretense. He just shot from his hip man literally like said to me what he felt and i like i appreciate coming from new york where we're kind of a no bull crap kind of town and i don't know if i can say that word uh but so i appreciate his uh his uh candid manner yeah, yeah. good guy and even though by the way we we we, we saw you with uh, lorenzo lomas a few times in movies even though in the long time back to renegade even though you were there yeah. also in the renegade yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. That was a very popular show at that yeah. time. Again, you, it is nice to see you also. It was very nice to see you that you joined them also. Many transitions over the years. Yeah, I had hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, if you go more back, actually, Robert, even though we'll in see. 1988, you know, there, were, there was a movie called Moving with Richard Pryor, you know? Yes. Yeah, of course. How can I he, yeah, he passed away in 2005, I think, when he was you 65, know. young age, 65, yeah. he died. But that movie yeah. was a really cool movie, which you did moving with him. That was yes. also nice. And in that year, also, you did another sci-fi movie with a robot, Short Circuit 2, the second yes. part. So that was also That's nice correct. movies in the 80s, those films. Los Locos, Los yeah. Locos Kicker, Los <laughs> Locos Kicker to Outer Space. Yeah, yeah, also. Yeah. And also, by the way, uh, I see also comments, uh, also says I get the comments now about Clint Eastwood, actually, oh, because yeah. you worked last year with Clint Eastwood, playing opposite of him, Clint Eastwood, That's The Moon. Correct. Yes, so that was also nice to see you in that project with Clint. I was at the so, cinema. Yeah. Wow. So that was, I think, I will nice never project. So tell yeah, us, never, tell us, never tell forget us about this. this. Well, um, like any other audition, it suddenly appeared before me. Manager contacted me, Charles Lago, who's my manager, contacted me. Great manager, by the way. Um, he contacted me and said, I have an audition for you, a Clint Eastwood movie. And I said, okay. And I was, living in, I was living in Washington at the time, and I wasn't in L.A. So they wanted me to take a camera, uh, which is pretty you know, standard practice these days, to do a self-tape audition. So I did. I read the material. I studied it, and I sent an audition to Clint Eastwood's people. He looked wow. at it. He liked it. He wanted me to do it again. So I had a friend hold a camera on me for a second time so Clint could see me from – because I did a close-up. He wanted to see what I looked physically like, my, my body type. So I, did a, I got the call back. I read the material, and I got the call that he wanted to hire me and was willing to hire me. So that was probably – a one of the best phone calls I received in a long time. And so, the movie yeah, did very well, actually, with the yeah. box office. I mean, it was also yeah. one of the also good movies. Yeah, I mean, it was a pleasure to work with him. You know, what I found fascinating about him, as well as Richard Pryor, because they both have the same thing in common. They were both very humble men. And Richard Pryor, which was the genesis for me of my movie career, was a very friendly Uh, approachable man who kind of took me aside, said some things to me that I needed to hear in terms of confidence as a performer, because it's not easy to be a tattooed actor in the 1980s yeah. going on auditions when casting directors tell you, hey, the messenger entrance is around back. So he showed me through love and through words and experience that I had value as a person, as a performer, regardless of what I look like. And that exactly. meant a lot to me. Exactly. I said that. And Clint showed me And Clint Eastwood showed me a kind of humility I've yet to seen from any celebrity at that level. When we broke for lunch filming The Mule, 
uh, I went into the area where they were serving the food, and I looked to the back of the line, and I saw an elderly man, unassuming, with his head down, standing at the back of the line, waiting to eat. And then it suddenly dawned on me, that's Clint Eastwood, waiting wow. at the back wow. to be served. And I thought, I adore him. You know, I love his, all his projects from Dirty Harry, you know, those movies, you know, like, I mean, it was, it was classic, you know, all those detective yeah. movies. You know, we grew up yeah. with all those movies, you know, Dirty Harry, all those. Me too. You know? Me too. Yeah. And also the Westerns and also, you know, the, you know, even though Escape from Alcatraz, you know, it was a yeah, big, big movie film. also with him, you know, so that was yeah. really And I hope, I hope he can do career. more. He's a director and writer. Huh? I hope he can do more movies because he's still, for his age, still he's good and he's still, you know, like over 80, oh. I think. 80s, but he's for still... Any yeah, for any he's, age. He championed yeah. the box office with the mule. I think it made over 100, close to $180 million worldwide. Yeah, Some course, young man. celebrities who have movies that come out over the weekend don't make that kind of money. Because it wasn't a, a, a superhero movie. It wasn't an no. animated film. It was no. basically a simple drama. Yeah. that I think opened at number two against, you know, animated movie yeah. that generally those types of movies do very well because of the audience uh, demographic, you know. So for a drama that uh, doesn't have all the bells and whistles of special effects that a lot of the films have these days, for it to stand on its own merit because of Clint Eastwood exactly. uh, says a lot for anybody, you know. But, yeah, so, yeah, it's not easy to do these days. Exactly. And then uh, in the last years also, you did another movie actually with interesting people. My friend also was playing in it, uh, Jeff, Jeff Hill. So I think you oh, know yeah. which movie. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> so you know the movie, Your Name is There. Yes, Silence. Yes. Yeah. So that was a really Jeff interesting Hill. cast. Yeah. Also, Jeff was in it, of course, from Johnny Messner film. Also with, uh, yeah, Danny Trejo, you can see. Chuck, Little, and of course, you are there. Tito Ortiz. And, yeah, Tito Ortiz. Really and nice there, man. We can see uh, Robert Lazardo, Nikki, Chuck yeah, Mandel. Many interesting people. So how was Good this? Guy. I think it was really nice to work with this cast. Oh, Johnny Messner's great. He's, he's a very, uh, like myself, very disciplined, uh, fortified uh, performer. He takes the work very serious. So... I was in good company with him. I'm glad that most of my scenes were with him. He, uh, we kept each other on our toes and we had a lot of fun making that film. Yeah, I think this was really also an interesting movie, a lot of action and interesting cast. You know? So that was yes. also really, really I think nice. everyone did tremendous in this film. All the actors I thought were very, very good. And also, even though you worked in Waterworld with uh, Kevin Costner, let's yes. see if he, yeah, I want to mention, because you were in many projects from General Hospital, you started also oof, many, many drop zone, or even Wesley Snipes. That was interesting. Title. Nice. That was a yeah, good this is when skydive movie. This is when skydiving movies were very popular in the 90s. Oh. I think what started was a film called uh, Point Break, starring Patrick Swayze. Yeah. I think the success of the, that film, yeah, the to, point break. the surfer and the uh, the skydiving, I think started this uh, this craze over skydiving and this sort of movie. Yeah, Point Break. So Drop Zone, I think, definitely emulated uh, certain yeah. aspects of the, that phenomenon. Because in yeah. that time, Robert, the, it was very popular, those high divings, you know, like when you do the movie, you know, the drop zone, because I remember, you know, Point Break and also Terminal Velocity with Charlie Sheen, Nastasia Kinski. That's right. And also, yeah, yeah, Drop Zone came. Of course, Wesley Snipes, you guys. You know, that was really a big movie, big hit at that time. Again, in the box office, actually, yeah. with good cast. Also, what I see. Yeah, also, that was a really cool one. And I see you yeah. also, yeah, Nash Bridges, you did with Don Johnson yeah. yes. on, the, on the television. Also, half past that too. Also, also, if I can, yeah, can I interrupt real quick? I just need to make a shout out to my friend Wesley Snipes because he was another man who, when I got to work with him again, he was very approachable and welcomed me to the, to the, to the project prior to filming in, uh, in Florida because we shot some of the movie in Miami, some of it in Key West, some of it in Key Largo. Um, we had a party prior to uh, principal photography and Wesley was there and he came up to me and gave me a hug and told me hey man welcome to the movie and he was really happy to see me so I was, once again I was a bit beside myself that someone of his statue and level of success would just talk to me uh, 
with a, you know, a, I don't know, just a, in a way that, uh, you know, yep. was really uh, endearing. So that was great. And we had a good time filming that movie. We have a fight sequence together in the film that had he not uh, been adamant and aggressive with the director at the time, um, would, have, would not have manifested. So I'm really grateful that he took the time to make me more visible in the movie. So thank you, Wesley, for watching this. Yeah, many thanks and greetings to Wesley Snipes also. Yeah. Hopefully we will get him and also. John Badham, John Badham directed that film. He directed Saturday Night Fever. So oh. that's a John Travolta, yeah. You know, iconic film director, John Badham, Saturday Night Fever. So we say hello to him, him, also to John. And by the way, yeah. you, you did more than 150 films, 150 films, projects. So it is very difficult yeah. for me to mention all of them one by one. Yeah, but we see <laughs> it's Nash okay. Bridges. It's okay. Nash Bridges, we had Don Johnson, also Project. Yeah. And then uh, Anar Anarchy Palor in uh, yeah. 2015. It's a nice, interesting horror movie also. It will come Yeah, I think soon. Anarchy Parlor Anarchy Parlor was a sort of a revelation for people in the tattoo community because it brought to the forefront this uh, the exploits of the tattoo phenomenon, whether it's you know, people that live in conventional uh, settings in life or people that are quite radical in their, uh, their um, desire to ornament themselves. It was a kind of a social commentary somewhat about that world uh, placed in a hostile type of environment. You know, I'm really, a for lore. Okay. Okay. Sorry, but I like the elements of it that suggest uh, uh, the, the, the mindset of the community of tattoos wow. and the people. Yeah. Yeah, we can see. I'm just showing mm -hmm. yeah. on the laptop. Just we found it. So I think it's, it's a horror movie. Yeah. Directed by Kenny Gage and Devin Downs. They approached me and wanted to write, build a story around what they perceived my persona to be in relationship to uh, you know, uh, the horror aspects so we could create something that was marketable. Um, so yeah, Devin Downs, Kenny Gage wrote and directed this film and we filmed it in Lithuania. Wow. Wow. That's really interesting. Yeah. Also. Yeah, it was pretty intense. I want to watch it. So I will watch it. So yep. for sure, because I'm and really interested probably... with this project also. So that, that looks but really... also one of the first times I got to play a leading, a lead character in the film and the character as Kenny Gage put it, survives the entire, not only survives, walks upright through the entire story and is unscathed. He's not destroyed. He isn't placed in prison. He's articulate. He, they allowed a situation to manifest within the genre of horror that suggested intelligence and insight that had not been allowed prior to. Because people think that I get to pick and choose the roles I play. I do not. You can't, okay. cannot tell your boss what, what work you want to do. Your boss says, look, I have this for you. And you say thank you and you do it. Every now and then you have visionary filmmakers who come along and say, you know what, Robert, I see qualities in you that manifest that are not being exploited. I'm going to write something with that in mind. So it's nice when this happens. And this is happening more and more with some of the projects that I've been involved with, you know, especially with the uh, Mahal Empire, Michael Mahal, Sonny Mahal and their movies, Attack of the Unknown, Bridge of the Doom, two movies yeah, that I are coming out. Yeah, I was just coming to that movie, actually, for, because uh, I see a lot of comments coming in August. This August, in yes. one and a half months, two months time, there will be a yeah. nice movie coming up, very special with aliens. I want to show the part of the trailer, Attack of the yeah. Unknown, in which you played with Tara Reid and Richard Grieco and Richard some Grieco. other cast. Let's see the, the poster, actually, the Attack of the Unknown. And you can see also Robert's name in the beginning robert the trailer is great we can see and cesar love the trailer actually so we want to thank show you the trailer. i appreciate that man. good stuff yeah yeah he, really, he uh, liked I it very like much it, really i think it's michael nice. mahal and sonny mahal they're very proud of this film they're very excited about it for obvious reasons it's going to be good really good so let's look at into it the trailer of the this interesting movie because it's really cool and it will be all on the theaters in august in half of august in the united yes. states and let's yep, yep. see the movie, the trailer. Let's look at it. Attack of the Unknown. So this morning, threats came in on Miguel Aguirre's life. I thought the feds were handling that. Yeah, well, they specifically requested us to move him to county and keep him on a 24-hour watch. Go, go, go! <laughs> oh. Uh...
All right, we got two rag guns, five blocks, extra clip, some tear gas, some knives, and every co-ed's favorite, pepper spray. So is this all we got? This is a jailhouse, not a police armory. We just gotta make sure every shot counts. <laughs> Before. My well was a trait of the settlers. One day he came to them, and the entire settlement was dead. They had all the blood taken from them. Vampiros del cielo, he called them. The vampires from the sky. You're here for blood. No one man is funny, man. Life's funny. I thought I was the monster. Interesting. So good stuff. It's coming, huh? With also Tara played, I think, good, and yes. Richard played very well, and you yes. awesome. So, so what's, guys, what's great, what's this exciting to me August. about this film, what's exciting to me about this film, Beryl, is that, and Cesar, is that, um, you know, I found myself in, within the fiction of storytelling over the years uh, coming up against all sorts of conflicts, but never have I come face to face with aliens. This is a yeah. first. So that's <laughs> new wrinkle for me. Yeah, I like but, that. Yeah, new but, genre for you. Huh? Because this is your first kind of movie like you're doing like this with aliens? I like the alien, bro. Good. I, get, I never got down with an alien before, so it's kind of cool to get down with an Amazing. alien. <laughs> <laughs> you're also excited, huh? It's, it's one thing to yeah. stand, up, stand up against men, right? It's another thing to stand up against uh, extraterrestrials that want to suck your blood. <laughs> <laughs> so what we didn't show. Oh, we have many things to show, actually. I wish we had more time. We have like 10 minutes left, actually. But uh, also, I want to show one more thing uh, on the screen with the footage with Bridge of the Doom. I think another that's Michael interesting Michael project with Kate Watson, Michael Pare. You know, so yes. that was also a really interesting I think project. So directed let's see. by Michael Sue. Yeah, directed by Michael Sue. So let's look at into it, and then we can talk a little bit about that too. So here is the bridge of the doomed coming up. This just in: all citizens are to remain indoors. The military are on the streets, but initial reports say they are unable to maintain control. Take them out to the desert and burn them, even our own. Yes, even our own. They're all infected. Check the sea, sir. What's happening? He's got a beach by one of those things. I'm so be hitting the river. The only way across is that bridge there. I'm sending Lieutenant Whitney to defend that bridge. Or blow if absolutely necessary. Is the location secure? The bridge is secure. Something for the detonator over the head. What was that thing? It wasn't an animal. And it wasn't one of those things either. Take them down. Now we secure the bridge. We take back this country. Wow, another good project coming up. I think this one is coming in October? I believe so. That's the general idea. I don't have an official release, but I'm pretty sure the film will be released this year. Wow, so that's interesting because you have many projects coming up. Actually, August, uh, the first film, yes. the others, and then October, we see the bridge. So it is really cool, actually. Yes, and in addition to this, the next film for Michael Mahal and Sonny Mahal is a film called Bloodthirst, written by Max Searchy, and we start filming this again. We stopped during the pandemic, but the wow. film is called Bloodthirst, starring Fantastic. Tara Reid, Cus Mandalore, and myself, directed by Max Searchy, original story by Max Searchy. So that Cost, should Costas, be uh, Costas next month. Say again? That's good. Costas Mandalore. He's one of our best He's friends. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait. I cannot that's, wait. That's it's really tough. nice. What was the name of the project with Costas? It's called Bloodthirst. Okay, Bloodthirst. Blood yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have to watch that and that's really nice. It's, it's basically about, it's basically a vampire apocalypse. The vampires take over the world. 
pretty much. Wow, kind of like that. wow. that like, is really nice. nice. I like it. I like it. So we have to watch first Attack of the Unknown in August on the theaters. Actually, don't forget. Put it in your agenda. In half of <laughs> August, check for the Attack yeah. of the Unknown with Robert Lazardo, Richard Grieco, Richard Grieco, Charlie, other cast. So we wish you also very good uh, box office numbers with Attack of Thank the Unknown, and then yeah, it will follow. So and now yeah, many projects, many things coming up, and of course I know that you are very busy all the time, busy, busy, busy. But there is something going on, reality, Robert, outside, outside. Amen. Corona. <laughs> so and now actually it is more today actually a lot of things going on in America. I don't know if you check the stock exchange market today. You can see Dow Jones, S and P more than you know like five percent down. So they said the second wave is coming. So it is really the last news is not good. I think actually in New York. I mean it is really I mean a bit. Not good, I mean, what I want to say, actually today, last minute, actually, we see the stock market, they are coming also some messages. So what are you doing in the Corona time at home? I think you are not also you couldn't go because I stuck also at my apartment like almost three months since half March, April, May, and still here, you know, only going to supermarket, you know, tell me a little well, bit about your experience. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'm a bit reckless. But I'm also considerate of other people, meaning that um, if the law says that I'm allowed to get on a plane and go to Florida and make a movie, I'll get on the plane and go to Florida and make the movie. That being said, I recently worked on a film called Mind Games uh, within the last two weeks. So I got on the plane with my mask. Okay. I went to Florida and I made that film. So that's one of the ways I kept myself occupied during the pandemic. Uh, but there was the no, law lock no lockdown because uh, they say that... Nobody can fly anywhere, no domestic flights. What I heard, not. Well, last time I looked, okay. um, a couple of weeks ago, I had no issue getting on the plane or coming back. Uh, I'm sure each day, each week, depending on the numbers or whatever the latest uh, intel suggests, that can change. But to answer the question, I spent some of my time working despite what fear suggests. So what I don't do, is I try not to let myself and my consciousness be enveloped by fear. Yeah. Uh, so when I'm not working, uh, I go to the beach. I meditate. I watch yeah. the surfers at the beach. I watch the dolphins. I read. I study. I do some mild exercises at home. And uh, I try to uh, enjoy life despite what, um, what the media and what fear dictates. Yeah. What can you do more, you know? I think that's well, the best. You, know, you get busy living or you get busy dying. So uh, with respect to those who have passed, I'm saddened by it. And it's the reality of our world that none of us, as Jim Morrison said, get out of here alive. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a sorry state in terms of what the numbers suggest and everything else that's accompanying in that circumstance. Yeah. All I can say is that I'm trying to remain hopeful positive and love my brothers and sisters uh, and try to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want my ambition, or maybe a better word, my discipline in relationship to being creative be robbed from me because I'm preoccupied with uh, an endless essay of what if this, what if that. You drive yourself crazy about what will happen you have to live each moment like it's your last and be grateful that you have those moments. That's why when you ask me how I'm doing, I say, hey, I woke up again. I'm no. grateful. You're only guaranteed one moment at a time. You're not guaranteed your next heartbeat. Exactly. So if you live exactly. that way, like the Tao suggests, you know, the Taoists live in the flow without a future, without a past, but in the moment of now, come into now, then you just enjoy the now. Man. And you work, make you make a a sort of utopia within your consciousness. I noticed in the background of your place, you had a picture of a Tibetan Buddha. And, and I look at this, I can relate to this sort of disposition of calm and just expansive connecting to all life. Yeah. In infinity, man. In infinity, everything is divinely perfect. Mankind yeah. clearly complicates that issue with all sorts of uh, illusions. And I understand that. 
But uh, I don't want to participate on that level, man. I want to kind of deal with things on a cosmic level, you know, and, I, and it's available to everyone. And it doesn't come in a book or, a, you know, a program or pay 1995. It's It's free. You just yeah. have to open your eyes and look around and say, what kind of day do I want to have today? Like Jeff Hill, my buddy who took me to the beach the other day, who linked us yeah, together. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw your pictures actually yeah. with him. Yeah. Jeff just said, hey, man, let's just go to the ocean, man, and just relax and be and breathe and enjoy the, the perfection of those moments. So that's what it is, just accumulating a, a, a series of moments that are just, you know, suggest something other than hell. Because we have enough of hell, don't we? Lord knows. I participate in the framework of fiction that communicates hell constantly. So I'm trying to liberate myself outside the box into an awareness that suggests something other than hell. Because we got more than enough of that. Yeah. Always stay positive. Yeah. And do as much as you can. Yeah. Absolutely. One question uh, about your book. We Gabriel Trial. Yeah, I'm working on a book. Okay. In during the pandemic, I've had time to polish up a book called Gabriel's Trial. It's a story of reclamation. At its roots, it's a love story. It's about a man falsely accused of a crime that involves some kind of a cultish, a cult type uh, uh, thing, uh, ritual killing. And the only one that has faith in this man, Gabriel, is his good friend Simon. Uh, they work together as tattoo artists. Um, Gabriel is ethics are called into question when he yeah. tattoos an underage girl and he tattoos a pentagram on her because she's a witch. And he finds out, unfortunately, that she's underage. So the local pastor comes to his tattoo shop and wants to know why he did this and makes a big deal out of the fact that that was his daughter, which I understand why anybody would make a big deal out of that. So not too long after that uh, a confrontation, uh, a young woman ends up missing in the community who was strangled to death and Gabriel is implicated in that murder. And so the only one who believes that his friend Gabriel has not, is, not, is innocent of this crime is his friend Simon. So Simon goes down a rabbit hole with Gabriel to try to get some answers and find out if his friend is either going crazy or he's been falsely accused. So basically, it's the book, Gabriel's Trial, stands in the genre of, I guess, murder mystery thriller. So I've been working on that to get that published soon. Uh, my manager, Charles Lago, has a publication division, so we're working to get that released, hopefully, either this year or the beginning of next year. Nice. And this was also, by the way, from with you and Jeff last weekend, I think, on the beach, on the water, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In the ocean, actually, in Malibu. Yeah. We literally went in the water. Yeah, it was great. It's good to go in the water. You got to get your feet wet. <laughs> I always say, right, what's the point? I always say, big Jeff, huh? He's tall, he's big, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's, you gotta, yeah, you gotta get a brace to look up at him. You gotta. Yeah, but, but he's <laughs> you have to a, see a chiropractor. Yeah, after you hang out with him. Yeah, he, he's a cool dude. So he was really, he yeah. was really nice. So he's a really nice. Well, yeah, person. I mean, if, if not, if not for him, he made us happen. You know, people think they make themselves happen, right? Yeah. You exactly. make me happen, right? I make you happen. Jeff made us happen. Exactly. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> so it was really cool. And by the way, in the Corona times, are you cooking your own food? Uh, you know, I think the closest thing to cooking, I'm not cooking, I'm blending. I have a blender over there. So I take my veggies and my fruits and I blend them into a shape. Yeah. Very healthy. Very healthy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Because always, uh, Robert, uh, we, we saw you from the first movie. You know, from General Hospital times, Death Race, Water, water World. Look at you. You didn't change. You never changed. Thank you're you. not always the same. The same look with your tattoos, of course. You are unique, you know. So, Thank you, I, sir. Yeah, Thank you it's really, it Thank is really nice, I think, you know, to see you always the time, you know, never change with you. Like Benjamin Button, actually, a bit, you know, <laughs> like you are but always like pros on the time, what we call. So it is really nice. Thank you. So, and any, any trips coming up to Europe? Hopefully, we will, we will have you hopefully in Amsterdam. I'll a, hopefully, I'll have an opportunity to meet you face to face. Yes. That's exactly. my family. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, you're a kind man. We would like to meet you, you know, in person. That would be my, yeah, be my pleasure. I, I would enjoy that. Uh, yeah. Let's hope that things get, if there isn't, I, don't, I won't use the word normal, but let's just say hopefully we'll find a situation in the near future where people can travel abroad again. You know, that would be nice. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. 
So, but, but I think it, it is going to be okay because we know that, you know, like uh, the things become a bit open now. So I think we can do more things soon. Hopefully. Yeah, I think there's, 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 there's areas of, of hope here and there that are auspicious that, you know, I'm going to Vegas to finish the rest of this film. I mentioned Bloodthirst in a couple of weeks. So that suggests something, you know, knock on wood. So, yeah, I've seen uh, evidence that there's opportunity to move forward, whether it's in the United States, overseas. However that manifests, I'm, I'm excited about all sorts of possibilities that suggest people from all walks of life having opportunity to do what they feel is purposeful in their journey, you know, exactly. and not be confined by a fear and a circumstance that doesn't open doors. Yeah. We should open the door somehow to our lives exactly. to see something. And now I'm, we are just checking the questions, actually, if you have some yeah. questions, because we have like five minutes left. So okay. maximum five minutes. So we are just looking something interesting because they all congratulate you. They see you well. They, see you, they send you a lot of hearts. And Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a book of... Thank you. Yeah. I mean, Dries de Winter from Holland actually from Textile Island, he said the same things. He sent you all the best. Just be happy, Robert. You create your own world, Robert. That's the thing and grow rich. We are all one. So it is a book of, it's a book of Dr. Erwin Lazio about his way of life, the science and an awesome book. We will buy it. Come Thank to, you. Come to Amsterdam. I'm just reading now the latest ones. They are very happy to see you here. They ask your Instagram account. Yeah, he, he just opened his Instagram account two days ago, actually, guys. So I have to get the check, the yeah. blue check. My friend said he will help me because, sorry, uh, everyone who's watching this, forgive me because I, uh, I'm trying to catch up to the 21st century. I'm a little bit behind. So I have a friend of mine who's going to authenticate the account so that people will feel that uh, uh, that makes sense, I guess. Exactly, because everybody is, uh, they're asking me why, you know, he has only like a couple of friends. I said, yeah, he just opened the account two days ago, actually. Two days ago, you started, they can see if your first post. I think you had only two posts now on your Instagram and just already 50 followers in, uh, in two days because you had yeah. uh, some other accounts. I see couple of accounts on Facebook, on social yeah. media, Twitter, and also Instagram, but they are not yours, I think, yeah, those accounts. Well, there's a, an account on Instagram that has, I think, several thousand that was created by a fan. Okay. So I'm grateful that someone created a, a, a Instagram, I guess, in my honor. Um, I have a social media page that I utilize to communicate with people in the industry. Uh, but outside of that, everything else is not, I guess, me, whatever that means. Yeah, so um, they can so see from this account now, they can see from the chat, so they can always uh, follow you, and then we will give the updates about uh, Robert. So he's really awesome. So thank you very much, Robert, then joining us today. Actually, we can do a small selfie together with you, actually, with Cesar and three of us. Let's make a selfie. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. And hopefully we will see you soon in uh, Europe, yes. especially in Holland. Uh, we will have some nice projects coming up and uh, lined up. So we would like to see you here with us face to face. Yes. And we can hug each other. So that will be, that will be I think, really cool. I'm not afraid. You know, I'm not afraid. <laughs> actually, I'm not actually afraid. I met him already like uh, five years, six years ago in Germany. So we have already connected, yeah, me and Robert, we were already yeah, connected. So that's how we also uh, communicate again. Anyway, Robert, so thank you very much for joining our Corona Diaries live chat. One moment. Thank you, everyone who, who took the time to watch, because without the people, we don't exist. So thank you, everyone. Exactly, who took exactly man. Through. So see you soon. And um, we wish you all the best. And yeah, good luck in the project in Vegas with Costas Mandalore. And we will see the movie in August. All right, man. Hopefully Take care. See you soon. Take care. Stay Ciao. safe. Ciao. Bye-bye. 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 So, it was a great chat with Robert. Again today, we learned a lot from him. It was awesome. He did more than 150 movies, all big titles. He worked with Clint Eastwood, Wesley Snipes, Kevin Costner, CSI Miami, he worked with Don Johnson, 
so um, you know so amazing and movies are coming up also august that's an awesome trailer and october one i loved it so keep on track and i will follow him so hopefully we will see him in europe all right guys thanks for watching and see you in the next chat have a nice day bye bye